Bravo, Hurt. Bravo. You know why I'm clapping for you, Hurt? Because I have to commend you. Because let's be honest, fathers don't get enough credit nowadays. We always get the short end of the stick, don't we? But you, you did the right thing. You did the honorable thing by telling your son to shut up, go put some ice on his eye, shut the fuck up and go in that room and be quiet. I told you about messing with those people. And I thank you for that, Hurt. You did the right thing. Now we can get down to grown folks' business and what everybody paid to see this week in the E-League, Hurt. Mac against Hurt in the ring face-to-face. -face. It's a very rare occasion, but special nonetheless. Don't you agree? I want to tell you a little story, Hurt. And this story involves what I like to do on my Sunday afternoons. I like to sit back, relax, and clear my mind from all the morons that I deal with in this business day in and day out, and the physical strenuous activity that a wrestler's body goes through in this business. So I just like to tope my little blunt, put my feet up, and I like to watch relaxing nature shows, hurt documentaries about the wilderness, about the animal kingdom, about nature. And I slipped upon a very, very interesting segment the other day that reminded me of me and you. And you know what that segment was about? The lion, the king of the jungle, and the young lion that wanted to dethrone him. Hurt, there goes a saying that to be the best, you have to beat the best. And everybody knows this saying, but it's so true. And for me to consider myself the best, which I was born and destined to be her, I cannot claim that. I cannot sit on that throne until I go through you. And I don't mean just inside of that wrestling meme. I mean right here on social media in front of the world to see her. I need to be better than you. And if anybody out there in that locker room or anybody is in this business and they don't want to be the best then what the fuck are you doing here? Because since I was a little boy, anything I put my mind to, I wanted to finish first. So yeah, it hurt. I'm tired of being second place. I'm tired of people saying you're great, but hurt. I'm tired of every doubt that right now today that I am undisputably the best in the world. And I want you to remember something, Hurt. I want you to remember that you created this monster. You are partially responsible yourself. So when you look in the mirror every day and you realize that I'm number one, just remember that you contributed to the monster that I have become. Now, I don't know what's up with you, Hurt. I just know that you're not the same. I know you're not at your best. I can see it. I can feel it. I can smell it on you. And when I watch you come out here on social media and I watch you constantly looking over to the side, looking down as if you had to write down material for me, then I know I have you exactly where the fuck I want you, Hurt. I am controlling this series. I am dictating the pace here, Hurt. Something you're used to doing. So I know I have you in a little unfamiliar territory here because I see you steadily looking over to mention L-U-W or looking over to mention Mike Brown or looking over to mention your history with Omni. No disrespect to any of those people or organizations, but I don't give a fuck about any of that hurt. I am Scott Mack. I am the new breed coming in here to take your throne from you. And all you keep doing is bringing up other names. All you keep doing is asking me to reference what you've done in the past, in other places, at other times. But yet, you will not acknowledge the fact that I am here in front of you right now, looking at you in your eyes. And I'm beating you, Hurt. You know it. I know it. And I don't give a fuck if anybody else out there realizes it. 
It's the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. So just like I lumped your son up and he's in the room crying on his pillow. Hurt. That is your destiny. Come Monday night when we get in that ring and you speak of vulnerability hurt. You've never been this vulnerable in a long time. And let me also tell you one thing. If me and Pimp J somehow defeat you and Sinless, when we go inside of that ring, it will be one of the biggest upsets in Battle Bowl history. <laughs> and just think about it. Just think about it. If me and Jay can get past the next round, it'll be Pimp J versus Scott Mack with the winner getting an opportunity. At, yeah, let me say it so you can hear it. The E-League World Heavyweight Championship. So don't fucking talk to me about vulnerability hurt. I know who's vulnerable right now. You know, the average person's reaction to Sky Max promo, and if you haven't seen it, you should go back and watch it because it's become a pretty big deal. More on that later. But the, the natural reaction to his promo would be for me to come out and go, oh, he's so wrong. Everything he said was wrong. And point by point, spin my side uh, to show you how wrong he was. But the truth of the matter is, Scotty Mack was right about a lot of things that he said. It's a lot of things that he said he was right about. A lot of things that anyone can look at me and see that he was right about. But there's one thing, one thing he was dead ass wrong about. And I'll get to that. Scotty. My job for a long time has been to groom and break and make and nurture stars. People that I identify as being stars, I try to bring out the best in them. And whatever they need, I'm there for. If they need a villain, I'll be the heel. If they need a face, I'll be the face. If they need a spanking, I come with the belt. If they need the opportunity, I step aside. Winning and losing a promo series is so far beneath me. So far beneath me. That's ridiculous. Everybody needs different nurturing. Some kids need to touch the stove. Sinless, I'm gonna touch the stove. I tell them the stove is hot, he touches it, he does. Um, stars like Fucker. Fucker had to learn the hard way the difference between OOC and IC and when not to show up on whose podcast in character when people are out of character. She's never been this part of the business before. And then people who couldn't fuck with her stylistically used that opportunity of vulnerability to come for her. And she had to learn how to navigate her way through that. She had some rough series. And she had to navigate her way through that. Position she had never been in before. And she's come through it stronger. As the best do. You. You need something different. You need to know. Your limitations. And I'm here to help you find it. Now, Arn Anderson once said, Barry Windham, when Barry Windham came into the business, he knew what to do, he knew how to move, he knew how to act, he knew how to talk, he knew how to wrestle, he fit in, he was great. There's only a few stars I've ever seen in this business do that. The first one that comes to mind is Jason Palmer. You don't know him. I know him as the park. First ever E-League. First ever E-League World Heavyweight Champion. Park came into this business dropping a meme. I don't know, remember what the meme was, but I remember when he dropped it, everybody goes, oh, this guy's going to get it. They don't know that he had been going through promo boot camp with myself and Black GOP for years before that happened. But when he came into this business, he knew what to do. He knew how to move. 
Um, I, God, cool intentions. Cool intentions came into this business. He knew what his limitations were and he knew how to move. And then, lo and behold, he moved on and he started spreading and his limitations started shrinking and you see what he's become. Versatility. Showtime. Um, Showtime needed to know administratively what it was. So he asked me one day, hey, do you mind if I go and, you know, do other stuff? Other owners of other E-Feds would have been like, no, 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 you're exclusive to us. I said, no, go, please. And he came back a better admin. He came back going, yo, you get out into the world. It's crazy. I love this place. But what he doesn't know is that he came back here better. Why am I telling you these things? Because this is just a portion of what I have to deal with being the top star in the history of this business. You, you, you say, yo, you talk about all these things that, that you had going on. I'm telling you that for a reason. And you're not getting a reason. So let me talk about how it pertains to you. When I talk about When I talk about my feuds with Joker J at his peak, at Jillian, feuds with Jillian at her peak, feuds with your partner, Jay O'Neill at his peak, Omni at his peak, Mike Brown at his peak, Brandon Moore at his peak. When I talk about leaving there, going to LUW, Eddie Cross, 1,674 days. And no, I'll tell you how I did that in a second, okay? I'll tell you how that, I'm looking you in the eye and I'll tell you how that happened. When I talk about Eddie Cross, Rod Dunn, Higher Gun. When I talk about Player One, when I talk about Seven Wisdom, when I talk about Rio, who's someone you'll get to know very soon. When I talk about these people and having a feud with them in their peak, it's because it's all right here. When I talk about going to WCC and having a feud with Chris Dillsworth and Ziggy Cobain and Mega, and Beast Mode, and Thirsty Jack, I remembered his name this time, and grooming Mel Walker at the same time, and destroying Dylan James at the same time, crushing his e without stepping into it. That's what being the top star in the business is. When I talk about going to WGG and going against George Cross, the most decorated person in the history of e arguably, arguably, and getting my ass whooped over and over and over and over until I can finally get a victory against him. That's what being the biggest star in the history of E-Feds is. When I talk about coming to PWR and having to go ass to mouth along with Tori, along with Johnny Rudo. Oh my God. That's just a day in the life of the horseman for me. And let me tell you what you were dead wrong about. I don't Use no notes. Nothing around my leg. Nothing anywhere. It's all up here. You got me fucked up right there. Am I vulnerable? No, I'm tired. Because I've been carrying the sport of defense. I'm tired. I'm tired. So when someone comes along and says they want to dethrone me, I'm not going to let them do it. But God, if they could do it and still be around, I could rest. I could sleep. But I don't know if that's you, Scotty. Because when you come into the E-League and you talk about having me, having me on the ropes in the E-Fed, having me on the ropes in this, in this promo battle, I don't know. Do you ever think that maybe you're right where I want you to be? Being groomed. Not just anybody can do it. You're special. You're, you're fucking special. I knew that from day one. You say I'm part of the reason you're like this. I knew you were special. I try to tell these other fans like this guy is special. But here's the thing. When you start talking about becoming the E-League World Heavyweight Champion in a league with cruel intentions, in a league with motherfucker who's been the best superstar in this company, and in, in, in a fed with Showtime who was one of the few people who ever pushes me. Okay, um, and in fact, with Omni 
in a fed with 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 Bad Moon Pat, Pat Legend, Sigma Male. You talk about Alpha. You talk about being in the fed with all those people. Brandon Moore in the summertime. And you want to be world champion? When you say that, those people take note. And when you say that, and then you're not here in three months, you were just talking. You lose credibility. So when I tell people that Scotty Mack is the guy, they're going to be like, the guy who said he was going to be champion, and then he lost to you and Silas, and he disappeared? I know you're here as a favor to me. I needed you. I'm losing stars. Let's put the shit on the table. Let's put the shit on the table. We're going through a bad period. We're down to our lowest roster that we've ever been at. We're at like 17 active people. That's, that's 18 active people. That's low. That's low. And I'm grateful for what you have come in here and done. But when you say you want to be E-League World Champion, you're going to be E-League World Champion, it would be great if you say you're going to come in and win this tournament and then leave. That would be awesome because that's what's going to happen. But when you start saying these things and you make these promises, you talk about these things that you're going to do, people expect you to deliver. And when you don't deliver, you lose credibility. And that's something I'm trying to teach you. Because no one's going to care that you're running PWR. No one's going to care that you're on loan to WCC. No one's going to care about your work in the EFED network. No one's going to care about your work in the Tony Baloney uh, podcast. No one's going to care about any of that. I see how hard you work. Omni sees how hard you work. Showtime sees how hard you work. But the vast majority, they don't care. They don't care. You want to be that guy who said that shit? He was going to dethrone her and then he was gone. It's not what I want for you. Mean what you say, say what you mean. Leave out all that other shit in between. So in your first promo, you pulled out a bunch of money. You told me to have a great time. So I mean, because here's the thing, man. If I could re-sign you to a long-term deal in the E-League, I would gladly go back in the poorhouse. So I don't have a lot because I'm still kind of broke. So you take all this. And park that note shit somewhere else. Park that shit up the street. You got me fucked all the way up. Vulnerable? Maybe. But I ain't got no notes. Sure, before each promo, I asked Siri how long it's been since uh, Eddie Cross ran from me. And I remember that, you know what I'm saying? But there ain't no fucking notes. You got me all fucked up. No, seriously, I'll show you. Hey, Siri. How many days has it been since January 7th, 2017? It was 1,674 days ago. Thank you, bitch. This nigga said notes. You're off track, Kurt. You know where the path that you are on will lead. You're off track. I know, but I have to get through this. I'm going to get back on track. Off track. I'm going to get back on track.